going back with another video. Today I'm here reacting to Stephen A's reaction to Blake Griffin joining the Nets. If you guys don't know, for some reason Nets decided to build some ridiculous, stupid, super team that I don't know. Like I'm a Lakers fan, I want Lakers to win, but this team's looking unreal. I think if anything, Blake Griffin would bring basketball knowledge and would help out DeAndre Jordan a lot especially since they're former teammates. So, I don't know, we'll see. Let's see what Stephen A has to say about it. Let's get into this video. And LaMarcus Aldridge are feeling the hate for joining the Super Team Nets. Blake saying this in the response to the critics. It's kind of funny to me because for the last couple of years, all I heard is how bad I am. You sign with this team and everybody's like, that's not fair. Stephen A, some hypocrisy here. Is the Griffin Aldridge criticism justified? Well, first of all, it's justified, and secondly, and, and, and more importantly... Uh, Can I ask you something? How could you ask Stephen A that question? He's the guy doing the criticizing. Yeah, yeah, Is it justified? Yeah, Who's yeah. been louder about it than Stephen yeah, A? That would be true. Yeah, I know. Absolutely I, did, I didn't know if I should just put him on the spot like yeah, that yeah, on actually, Front Street right out of the gate. I, I, I was going to no let him do it himself. It. I said what I said. I meant what the hell I said. Ain't nobody scared of Blake Griffin. I respect the hell out of him. I really do. Not just as a basketball player, but as a person. But I... I think Stephen A is right, like nobody's really afraid of him, but what he brings to the game and how he can affect other players is probably how he's going to have a good impact on the Nets. Said what I said, I meant what the hell I meant, all right? The fact of the matter is, is that he's got this wrong, though, in this sense. It wasn't me that said that. Remember, I was pointing out how Blake Griffin, and you remember when you were talking about Max, how the dissipation and skills, yep. and I was saying he's a place where he doesn't want to be. Notice it's he's Detroit. dunking now. It's Detroit. He doesn't want to be there. He's not that interested in being there, et cetera, et cetera. You know what? You depart from L.A. to go to the Motor City. It's a difference. And you look at the Clippers franchise and what he had there compared to what he has in Detroit. It's a difference. That's what I pointed to. I certainly didn't point to some flagrant dissipation of skills. As a matter of fact, the only argument that we made, and I still stand by that, is who would you rather have, Blake Griffin or Carmelo Anthony, when we were talking about both of them? And I said I'd rather have Carmelo Anthony, and I didn't think that Blake Griffin was Carmelo Anthony. This is years ago. We had that discussion. That's the only negative thing I've ever said about Blake Griffin, and I don't consider it negative. It was just me praising Carmelo Anthony because, damn it, Carmelo Anthony deserved it. He deserves it now, and I'm very proud of my brother. For Carmelo Anthony could get buckets. I've seen, I think last year, 2020, he put up, I think he put up 31 game, and he's like an average 15 points per game player, so, you know, he's doing his part, especially for being this deep in his career, so, I'd probably choose Carmelo, too. Doing but what in between, doing. he didn't deserve like, it so well, much. Well, you could say he didn't deserve it, but he had He departed. does deserve it now, he, he, he deserved it then. He had, departed from, he had departed from the Knicks. And then remember, he was in Oklahoma City and then from Oklahoma City to Houston. But there were some issues in both respective places, which I highlighted. But for him to be out of the league was, was just ridiculous. And Carmelo Anthony has proved me right. I'm proud of that brother. Now let me get back to Blake Griffin. That's all I said. I've never said anything about Blake Griffin couldn't play. Matter of fact, I specifically pointed out he can play. Here's where Blake Griffin and LaMarcus Aldridge needs to understand where I'm coming from. KD might have left go, uh, Oakland, Oklahoma City to go to Golden State, Max and Molly. But KD was a superstar. And he arrived as a superstar. And even though they were a bomb squad, he still elevated them because he's that great. Okay? That's what I'm talking about. When you look at LaMarcus Aldridge and Blake Griffin, they were once the cornerstones of a franchise in Portland and L.A. respectively. When LaMarcus Aldridge went to San Antonio, that was a big-time free agent pickup for the San Antonio Spurs. And we were looking at them different because LaMarcus Aldridge had arrived, and obviously they had the other pieces there with Mono and Kawhi and all of that other stuff with Tim Duncan fading into the twilight. We understood that. What I'm saying is, is that you look at them now, it's as if they are literally hanging on for the sole express purpose of getting a championship while making a minimal contribution. That is not the same as you being some big-time talent and then going to a team as a big-time talent where you're playing a pivotal role. And so what I'm saying is for them to join a squad where you're talking about Blake Griffin and LaMarcus Aldridge possibly not even being a fourth option. So, I can understand what he's saying in the sense that Blake Griffin 
was in the Clippers and he was their franchise player for a while. That guy, when he came into the league, made the most amount of noise I've seen in a, in a minute. You know, so the fact that he fell off and then LaMarcus Aldridge after Tim Duncan left, it was supposed to be like the Spurs knew Tim Duncan. He fell off as well to the point where they've gone so far under the radar that, you know, like it's it's ridiculous that their drop off was tremendous. And now they're going to join a super team to do what they were supposed to do in the first place, which is when it chip. you know, so. I, I can understand why Stephen A is getting furious and why a lot of people would be upset, but at the same time, it's not like we're getting LaMarcus Aldridge and Blake Griffin in their prime. We're getting the remains of LaMarcus Aldridge, LaMarcus Aldridge and Blake Griffin. So. A fourth option. I'm like, damn, that's all I'm saying. And I don't apologize for that because I'm about this competition, man. I'm about, it means everything to me in this sense. I want to see who you go against. How many times do I sit here with you, Max, across from you and talking to Molly? How many times do I pay attention to two things? Resume, and I talk about who you win against. Quality of opposition. The quality of opposition. And when the, the scales are tipped so dramatically that there's barely competition, I'm not saying that's reality, the really case. I'm saying that's the intent. That's where I get along. That's all I'm saying. Blake is right about this, and you're wrong. Okay. And I will tell you why. Please do. First get of all, him, Max. The media is not a monolith. We all have different things to say. Sure. But overwhelmingly, what Blake has been hearing recently, not from you, is you stink. You can't play anymore. Yeah, he heard right? that from me. No, he oh, didn't hear that part from you, but he heard that. And now he's hearing overwhelmingly from the media, it's not fair. They got Blake. So he has a right to feel that way. It's not directed at you or me or just G Well, I think what the, the, what the media is trying to say is, the reason I would say it's not fair is because... Like I said, it's not exactly what he can do, but it's just the effect that he has. Like, he has the mindset of how to win. Even though he hasn't really been winning as much, like, he's been in the league for a lot of years. You know, he's a vet. So he knows how to win. He knows how to incorporate his teammates. He knows how to get a bucket for himself, assist, rebound. You know, so that's still a threat. Even if, even if it's a minimal threat, it's still a threat. And his veteran his veteran skills will be able to help out the others around him and elevate the team that way. Same thing as LaMarcus Aldridge, you know? Um, LaMarcus Aldridge, first of all, was averaging 20 a game last year. So the fact of the matter is he can still go up and put up those 20. It's only because he didn't feel wanted in the Spurs why he even like left the Spurs. So, you know, if LaMarcus Aldridge comes on the Brooklyn Nets putting up 15, 20 points and like eight rebounds, that's still plenty because you have KD that can put up 30. James Harden that can put up a 30 point triple double. Kyrie can put up 30. Joe Harris can put up 20. That like this, this team's loaded generally like hold up time out most of what is said is i can't play and now most of what is said is it's not fair the nets got me how's that work okay that's number one number two you're essentially saying he's ring chasing and that when he was the he cornerstone is. of a franchise he couldn't get it done and the same goes for lamarcus aldridge and you're right about that mm -hmm. you're right they weren't good enough to be the best player on a championship team Maybe not even the second best player on a championship team. But I'm not going to sit here and castigate players who've come to a conclusion, especially at this point in their career, that's not easy. I can't be the man on a championship team. You know why, Stephen A? Not good enough. They're not quite good enough. It's not that they weren't fantastic players. They were. But there are levels to this. When you have a league with LeBron and KD and those guys, that's a level above the highest level Blake or LaMarcus Aldridge have ever played on. Mm -hmm. That's not a slight to them. It's, a, it's praising the level that LeBron and KD have attained. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to sit here and, and cast aspersions and kind of take credit away from guys, especially when they're older, mm -hmm. who acknowledge that, okay, you know what I can be? I can be the fourth option on a championship mm -hmm. team, especially when the addition of Blake and LaMarcus Aldridge doesn't make it unfair to the Nets. They don't really move the needle. What moves the needle for the Nets was KD, James Harden, and Kyrie Irving. 
That's why the Nets are going to okay. destroy everybody. Okay, okay. Here's, here's my point. First of all, I'm allowed to not like something without it actually being a criticism. It just doesn't happen to be my preference. I'm not knocking Blake Griffin and LaMarcus Aldridge. I get it. But my point is, is that if this were a superstar that we saw descend before our very eyes, we would be like, why not just retire? As opposed to be seen as somebody who's the fourth, fifth, sixth wheel on a team riding the coattails of other people. Thanks for. See, that's what um, a lot of people are trying to say is like, if you were once a superstar, you were once a franchise player, and you have now been reduced to the absolute minimal version of your previous self, why not just retire instead of chasing a ring on a team that you're basically gonna be one of the last resorts, you know? Because, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, at least you win a ring and you'll probably get into the inducted in the Hall of Fame because of your previous uh, track record and then now you have a ring, but it's just like, there's a lot of great players that have been inducted in the Hall of Fame that have not won a ring, you know? Look at Allen Iverson. You know, he's still one of the world's best ball handlers that's ever played the game. And everyone remembers him because of how great he was. But I guess um, the league nowadays is focused on winning championships. And that's why a lot of older guys that should retire are now hopping on these super teams. Like how what, Dwight Howard hopped on the Lakers last year. And like Dwight Howard's in great shape, but he's definitely towards the end of his career, you know? And he finally got his first championship with LeBron and AD and that, uh, you know? So, I don't know. My take on it is that the Nets team is ridiculous. Um, there's a lot of basketball knowledge and talent on that team that is far beyond any other team right now presently so yeah that's about it for this video if you guys like the video please leave a like down below comment down below anything you guys want me to react to or or if you have anything to say about the video and subscribe if you're new and i'm out y'all